Okay, so today I'm going to run you through how to create a glass shader um, for tune shading in Blender. Uh, so I'm going to start off with this object here. I've already got a shader attached, but basically I want to replace this top section of this UFO um, with a glass shader. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, first thing, create a new shader. And down here, I'm going to get rid of the principled BSDF. Now, the way this shader works is to basically uh, choose between two different shaders. First one is going to be an emission. The second is going to be a transparent. And then in order to mix between those two, we're going to need a mix shader. So I'll plug those into the mix shader, plug that into the surface. I'm just going to remove the body color shader from this so we get our output. So at the moment, all this mix shader is doing is basically selecting between either transparent or emission. But you'll notice one other thing that comes up, which is that the transparent doesn't actually go transparent. It turns to this black color here. So what we need to do is over on the right hand side, um, in the materials options, we need to change the blend mode here into alpha blend and now you can see our transparency comes through um, and I'm also going to change our shadows to alpha hashed okay so that gives us the ability to use this mix shader to choose between either the emission or the transparent um, but all this is doing is just basically hiding um, our object when it's fully transparent. So what we need to do is to um, determine where our highlights are going to show up and also we're going to input some rim light. And the way we're going to do that is to use the factor here um, and we're going to basically run in um, a part of the shader that tells it where to put the highlights. And the way to do that is as follows. We're going to start off by adding in a glossy shader and then we're going to add in following that a shader to RGB so if you've used a teen shader before you probably understand what this does it basically converts the shader to um, a color output and then we run that color output through a color ramp we set the color ramp from linear to constant we run the shader to RGB into there now, if we go to this output, we can do that just by running this through to the surface output here. Or if you've got a um, uh, node wrangler, you can basically um, control shift click. And essentially, as we drag this white down here, we see that we then get the highlight on the glass. So what we're going to do is find a place where we like that highlight and then we can take the output from the color ramp, put it into the factor here, let's get rid of this view mode, run the output from the mix shader into here and we have our transparency and emission for the highlight. However, unfortunately we've got it the wrong way around so what we're going to do is shop, swap the emission over with the transparent so that the white portion from this color ramp controls the emission, the black area controls transparency. And now if we have a look around this object, we can see we've got this highlight. So there's two ways to control this highlight. One is that we can adjust this color ramp, which will give us um, the amount of highlight that we get. We can also control the roughness of the glossy, which will also um, enable us to control how much of that reflection actually occurs and also how much it reflects other objects within the scene space including the environment and background uh, but I'm going to go with this I'm going to set this roughness to about here uh, so this is all good so we could render this out now but you can see it's not the nicest effect because we don't have that sort of that rim highlight as well uh, so the other thing we're going to do is basically just put in uh, a layer weight node so that we can then get this additional rim light around the edge. 
So we're going to go Shift A to add. Um, we're going to go input. I'm going to go layer weight. Uh, so if you don't know the layer weight, basically um, uses the Fresnel effect, although I prefer using the, the facing one for this. And we can set this blend, and it basically creates an edge effect. Now again, what we want to do is we want to take the color ramp, we're going to duplicate it, so Shift E to duplicate. We're going to run this layer weight into our color ramp. And now you notice we get a nice rim light going around the edge. And again, you can change the amount that you want um, this effect through the color ramp here. Um, but you can also use the layer weight. So now all we've got to do is add these two color ramps together. So you can go Shift A, add in a color mix RGB. We're going to plug the two of them in, and we're going to set the mix here to add to basically just add these two together. Um, we run that into the mix shader and the mix shader out. And now we have a glass shader that will respond to light, it will respond to the backdrop. And if we render this out. Positing in a sec. There we have our glass shader. Uh, now, one thing to note: I've got uh, freestyle lines turned on here. Anything behind this glass shader won't actually show up as a freestyle line. Um, that can be a useful thing to do. Um, one other thing you might want to do is turn off the freestyle line that runs around. Uh, the glass. It's up to you, it's a personal choice, but I prefer the glass not to have that freestyle line. So there's a way to do this. So over here we've got the UFO glass dome, which is actually um, the glass object. As you can see, we can grab it and move it around. Um, and we've got the UFO itself. Um, the reason I've separated this out is because I'm essentially going to use um, put it into a separate collection and then use that to um, turn off the freestyle line for that object. So the way we're going to do that is go over to here and click Add Collection. And I'm going to rename this collection Exclude. And then I'm just going to pick up the glass dome, drop it into Exclude. And now what I need to do is tell my freestyle line, which you turn on freestyle here, but I actually want to tell it um, how which objects it's actually going to apply a freestyle to. So I'm going to come down to this tab here and scroll down to the bottom. And under the freestyle options here, we can see uh, there's a selection by, and we can click on collection here. And this opens up this extra option, which is um, inclusive or exclusive for individual collections. So if I click on this collection um, window here, click exclude and then click on exclusive. And what that will do is it will mean that anything that is within this collection here, within the exclude collection, will not get a freestyle line. And if I go to render image now, go to the compositing, you can see I've got this glass without the freestyle line applied to it. And that's it.